All right, so we're here in Times Square. Just look at how epic. So many lights and colors and people and cars. It's hectic. Um, and in typical Shane Bloom fashion, I uh, instead found a puddle. So that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> I, got, I got a puddle that's uh, created by the rain here. And what I thought was kind of interesting is how all of these LED lights are shining back in this puddle and they're creating a really cool abstract pattern. So right now I'm using this lens at about 200 millimeters and just like aiming right down at the puddle. So check that out. Pretty cool. The colors are changing. And if I aim the camera around, I can create different shapes and different textures here. So I'm gonna do F16 here. Let's try ISO 800. A little bit of a long exposure here is once the colors shift, I'm going to try and get a little bit of a focus stack going. And we'll see if that works. Right. The lights are changing pretty fast, so I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm going to play around with uh, more of these puddles and see, see how these shots turn out. These abstract shots were really fun to capture and definitely a spontaneous surprise here. It really goes to show if you think outside the box, you can find interesting things to photograph almost anywhere in the world. I love the mixes of color here and how the picture almost looks like a painting. And now I'd love to hear from you. Which one of these puddle images do you like best? Please let me know in the comments. Well, this is definitely one of the most hectic places I've ever tried to take pictures before, and it's uh, really hard to focus. I knew that coming to Times Square I would want to try and do a time-lapse sequence, and I wanted to find a really nice perspective that showcases the road and the towering LED lights up above. Alright, so here is the perspective at about 16 millimeters, and what I could do at 16 is go pretty wide like that, but what really interests me is this little middle part with all of the uh, LED lights. So I think I'm gonna zoom in here, maybe like 25 millimeters there. I think that looks really nice. Cause I love the traffic moving here, all the people. For this time-lapse, I decided to capture about 400 frames with a one second interval. And I did a slight long exposure of about 0.5 seconds to get a bit of blur in the cars and blur in the people. And here's how it turned out. So you might be wondering, what kind of technique is this? So this is that time-lapse sequence with every single frame compressed into one, which averages out all of the traffic, the people, and those LED lights almost become empty squares. After this, my friend Austin and I decided to wander to the iconic Radio City Music Hall to see if we could get any street shots with the rain. All right, let's see if I can get a shot in the puddle decided to start out with a typical wide-angle shot that includes the building and some of the street traffic down below. So the puddle didn't work quite as well as I thought it would, but that weird metal street panel right in front of it was a lot more reflective. So I moved over and sure enough I got a way cleaner shot. I switched over to half a second for my shutter speed to get some car blur and waited for the right moment to click the shutter. I thought this image turned out okay, but I was getting a little bit more interested in just focusing on some close-ups of the Radio City Music Hall sign, and here's how those turned out. After this, we decided to take the subway over to the financial district to see what other interesting buildings we could find. So Austin and I are right now in Fidei, and you can see the Oculus right in front of us, which is a really amazing structure. 
and then we've got One World Trade up there too. So we'll see what we can do here. I've got the uh, 28 to 200 on here. So we'll see if there's any potential shots. All right, so I think I found another perspective that's pretty cool. So let me show you what I found here. So once again, we're at 28 millimeters, so pretty wide perspective of all the buildings in the street. But as usual, if we zoom on in to the buildings up there in the distance, you can start to isolate some of these windows, some of these shapes here. I like this right here with these scattered windows that are kind of lit up. Some of the reflections almost have like a shimmering quality to them. Now, the only thing about shooting this is I have to correct the vertical lines. And let me pan over, see what else we can find here. Mm. Ooh, that's kind of interesting right there. Some layering to the buildings, just some nice diagonal lines going on. This building in the back is a bit darker, so it provides a, a, a lot more contrast. And then I love the orange tones in the windows in here. So it is at night, so I'm gonna switch on over to my timer. I'm gonna do F16. I could probably do ISO 100 and just do a nice long exposure. This is cool, a little zigzag. I really have no idea how these shots are gonna turn out, but you know, you never know unless you shoot it, because if you don't shoot it, well, it's not, it doesn't exist. Funny enough, while I was taking these shots, I had an unexpected interruption. Hey, how's it going? Oh, no. I can't have this. But I can just you can take pictures? This. Yeah, but that's not Oh, okay. Yeah. Where can I have this? Like, can I go eat further down that way? Yeah. Like a little... No, you can have the camera, just have, have the tripod. Oh, but I mean, with the tripod, is it okay if I stand like that way? No, it has to be like Oh. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, that's okay. You know what? I got, I got a shot, I think, before, before we got kicked out, I think I got a shot. I guess that's the difference between doing nature photography and cityscapes. Yeah. No, one comes, no one comes over and kicks you out for shooting the trees. <laughs> now, I certainly don't blame that guy. He was just doing his job. And I do find it really funny, though, that as soon as you have a tripod suddenly you're a professional photographer but I could have just taken almost the exact same shot handheld. It ended up being a good thing that he interrupted me anyways because I probably should have been moving on from those shots. So yeah, pretty cool but I have a shot from here kind of during the day with some of the sunlight shining through the building and then there wasn't that blue light there and the flag wasn't there as well and I'm going to put that on the screen to show you what what it looks like but I think that it's a little busy right now in terms of trying to simplify this scene whereas the one that I shot years and years ago it kind of almost takes like a sci-fi look whereas right now um, with all the things going on, it kind of feels more like a mall, which I guess it is sort of a mall. <laughs> I guess it's a mall. I think it's a mall. <laughs> Even though I'm trying to turn it into some sci-fi egg as, you know, spaceship with alien life forms, it's, uh, you know, we're standing in a mall. After this, I took the subway to New Jersey to see if I could get some night cityscapes of the skyline out in the distance. All right, so I found a quiet place to record here looking at the skyline and just check this out. Absolutely beautiful. Got one world trade right in the middle of the skyline. And I moved a bit to the left to disperse the buildings that are in front of uh, one world trade and make it look a little bit more neat. The other perspective I had to the right just wasn't working out quite as much. I definitely want to try a shot like this that's wide 
with the beautiful reflections in here too. Like the water reflections are so nice, but also <laughs> I can zoom in to about 200 millimeters or even less and start to pick out these little alleyways with the different building lights and just really interesting. So I need to play around a little bit with this, but I think I'm gonna start out with the typical wide shot first. I'm thinking for this, I'm gonna keep it really simple, kind of like one third water, two thirds sky. I'm gonna do ISO 100. I'm gonna do a long exposure so that we can really see the smoothening of the water. So I'm gonna do a 30 second exposure here. And let's see how this looks. So if we aim this way, you can see there's the Empire State Building. It's lit up really nicely. I think the only problem with this view is if I zoom in, well, I can't zoom in too much further, but you can see there's another building that's behind it. It's kind of obstructing the view a bit. I either want to separate those two or hide that building entirely. So I think what might be worth a shot is walking to the left to see if we can separate the two buildings and get a better perspective in that angle. I also see the Chrysler building peeking out too, which might be a nice addition to the shot. So I'm gonna walk that way and see if we can get a better shot. just one last perspective of the city here it's a pretty interesting one I really ended up liking this image with those pillar reflections just kind of streaming through the bottom of the scene and all the colors that you had in this one. I thought that it was cool that that boat stayed still in this long exposure and the cityscape in the background is one that I don't often see. This day was some of the most fun I've ever had shooting photography, and I think that comes down to the amount of variety that I was able to capture here, from the night cityscapes to the abstract shots and even the time lapses. I felt like I was able to go somewhere really different, get out of my comfort zone, and really just try and think outside the box. And I would definitely encourage you to do the same thing. Go somewhere unusual that you would never have expected to photograph, and see what kind of interesting things you can come up with. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it and want to learn more about how I take and process my images. I'm going to leave a link to my workshops in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And I'm going to have part two to this New York video out soon as well. So make sure to stay tuned for that. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.